She came to Charleston in 2009 to help turn the Charleston County School District into one of the best in the country. And in this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups, I talk exclusively with Associate Superintendent Dr. Lisa Herring. Well, you know, a lot of people have been coming up to me this weekend, and, you know, we heard about it on Facebook and Twitter and local news about a possible bus strike. Tell me, what outcome do you want to see from this situation? Well, that's a great question, Quentin. The obvious outcome is that there will not be a bus strike, that the Durham Transportation Services can um, have negotiations with the appropriate sources and that they will come to a happy medium and that both parties will find that they are satisfied with an end result. Um, for us at the school district, our primary goal is the safety of our children, children yeah. and that transportation is not interrupted because that way instruction won't be interrupted. So a win-win is that we understand that negotiations take place in the labor force yes. and that certainly there are reasons for wanting to do that, but as an educational institution, that there is an interruption, there is not any interruption to um, education in all of our schools. And you have been the associate superintendent here at the school district since 2009. Since 2009. Well, actually, when I, okay. when I came to Charleston in December 2009, I came in as the executive director of student support services. Awesome. Uh, at the conclusion of that year, going into 2010, I was given the opportunity to um, become the associate superintendent for academics and instructional support. That's awesome. Thank you. And you know, tell me, um, what was so attractive about Charleston and the Charleston County School mm -hmm. District? <laughs> that brought you here. All right. Well, so I'm originally from Georgia. Yes. Um, and as an educational leader or just as a person in education who has a passion for children, one of the things that was most attractive to me about Charleston County is the fact that I saw that it was progressive. Yes. So I took the time to research the district. Um, I was able to see where the progress was in terms of student achievement. I was um, intrigued with the increase at the time that I came aboard in 2009, that the graduation rate had increased. I believe in 2009 there had been almost an 11 uh, points or 11 percentage points in terms of the overall graduation rate. That's awesome. And Charleston had in place um, the uh, plan of excellence. And I have worked in other districts, and although I had not had the chance to interact sure. with administration, sure. It was evident that there was some progress being made in Charleston County. It didn't hurt I was that say. <laughs> Charleston is uh, conveniently located near the water. Right. Um, and um, actually, my first time in Charleston was my interview. Exactly. So uh, it took some time to really learn the landscape. I'm probably still learning it. And take me back to that interview. How was that like? Um, I think it's fair to say that um, it gave me some insight into what I might expect. <laughs> sure. Um, I pursued that position because my previous experiences in education at that time were very much aligned with what I thought they wanted someone to come in and do. Sure. So prior to coming to Charleston, I was a director of student support services. That was an executive director position. What was outlined in the job description was very much intact with what I had already done to some degree in my past work. And I thought that if I I'm able to secure this position, I can take them where they want to go um, for what they need. And I like that type of opportunity. That's the way I look at every career move. Does it give me the chance to take my skill set to the next level? And more importantly, will it provide for the organization what they need? And, and for me, I don't think just about what they need. I think about and what more can we do beyond that? because this field is about children, so it's, I always think about next level. It was also my chance to connect with, at the time, my supervisor, sure. know a little bit more about who I might be supervising oh, yes. as, a, as, an, as, as an administrator, yes. and um, they asked really great questions, and I walked away feeling pretty good about the interview. That is awesome. And before Charleston, you actually were working for the Bibb County School District. <laughs> yes, I was. So Bibb County is Macon, Georgia. Right. And that is actually where I grew up. Oh, is that right? Um, it's my hometown. And as I was sharing earlier, I was director of student support services there. Right. And had worked in that capacity for three years. Uh, and prior to that, I was in Atlanta. It was a very special time in my life because much like um, other, unlike other opportunities, 
I was working in a place that was my hometown, so I felt like I was giving back. And before Bibb County, you actually worked in DeKalb County as well. <laughs> You've done your homework. I yes, did. sir. <laughs> so, yes, so before that, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, yes. in DeKalb County. That's right. And um, Atlanta is probably a place I call home just as much as Macon. Right. I did undergraduate work in Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, so Atlanta is a home base. And I grew. My introduction to administration started in DeKalb County. Exactly. DeKalb County at that time was about 100,000 students. Very large district. I was say. And um, it helped me develop myself as an administrator. And I was, I was fortunate. I had a lot of mentors who were really working to help develop me as an educational leader. And I just feel blessed that I got opportunities to grow. And I will tell you that that work has helped to prepare me for even sitting here with you right now. Well, thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. And let's talk about home, which is Macon, as you mentioned. What memories come to mind? <laughs> well, Quentin, for anyone, when, when I think home, I think about my parents. I yes. think about, um, quite honestly, I miss it quite a bit. Awesome. Um, Macon's four hours from Charleston. Yeah. I, I, when I first came here, I think I drove home every weekend. Is that right? Then I got pretty tired pretty <laughs> fast. So I don't get a chance to go home as okay. much, um, but my parents are there, and because it's where I developed as a young woman, um, I started to grow as a, a young leader there. But also, it can't say making and not say, you know, it's the home of folks like Otis Redding. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> little Richard Redding's yeah. our family that we know quite well in my family. Oh, great. And uh, my roots, so roots, you know, for me, Macon, Georgia, that's where my roots are, are firmly established. And um, it's where I found myself growing and developing, and I will forever love Macon. Yes, that. indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, let's continue to walk down memory lane. I understand that you actually attended and graduated from the Great Stelman College. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so a series of very fortunate events. Um, when I graduated from high school, yes. um, one of the things that I knew for sure was that I actually I knew I wanted to go to an HBCU. Oh God, God, good. And Spelman was one of several options. I'm an only I'm the only female child, so my, my parents have four children. I have three brothers, and my parents were more um, focused on kind of keeping me not too far away from the Macon is an hour south of Atlanta. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, Spelman was a, a natural choice. Yes. And it brought out the very best in me in turning into a woman, a woman of color, and a woman of leadership. So um, I am forever indebted to Spelman College. Great years, great times, class of 1994. And speaking of that, who was Dr. Lisa Herring as a college student? <laughs> well, as a college student, um, that's a great question. I was, I think, like most college students, discovering my purpose. Sure, sure. So I'm a firm believer that um, the things that happen in our life, they, they don't occur by accident. That's right. As I've grown older, I, I really embrace that. But discovery, college uh, was about discovery. It was about owning my purpose. It was about defining my culture. Sure. Um, it was about learning my journey. Yes. So I've, I had some powerful professors that I still keep in touch with That's great. who um, kind of helped direct my path. That's great. So, and most importantly, I have some yes. friends who, I, 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 as a, a female who didn't have sisters, okay. um, and Spelman being an all women's Most college, college yes. I found some women who I will forever call my sister. That's good to hear. Yeah. And then we also partied a little bit. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Things that happen at Spelman stay at Spelman. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. You're absolutely but that, right. Yeah, yeah. Just a little. Yes, not a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And later you got your master's from USC in Columbia. Yes, sir. I did. So. Uh, shortly after Spelman, I taught um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yes, I did at a private. I'm sorry, at a private school, sure, sure. The, Char the Winchester Thurston School. Okay. I was, a, um, I was an English teacher really? and creative arts teacher, a creative writing teacher. I'm okay. sorry. And then I knew it was also time to go back to school. Okay. So I kind of wrestled with: Do I go get a master's in teaching, or do I do a, a, a counseling, etc.? I went back to Macon and just taught for a little bit, and yes. my students from both experiences really pushed me towards counseling. Oh. Uh, I applied for graduate programs um, in several places, and uh, USC won me over. Wow. 
That was also a unique time in my life. Um, I'm a parent of a 16-year-old daughter. That's great. And at the time of starting graduate school, I started graduate school with a nine-month-old. Wow. So I had to be thoughtful about what could I do as a single parent sure. um, and do it well yes. and also raise this child. And Columbia, South Carolina was a different place, yes. <laughs> but it wasn't too far from I'm home. You got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, from what I read, too, to 2004, you actually got a doctor's degree from Georgia Southern University. I did. I did. So, um, correct. When I finished uh, graduate school at USC, yes. I started working in DeKalb. Yes, right. And I was a counselor at that time and then moved into administration while in DeKalb. Oh, good. And right before I moved into administration, I started the doctoral program at Georgia Southern. Oh, good. A sacrificial time again because I didn't stop working. It was very traditional, so it was face to face. Face, yeah. Weekends uh, were taken away from me for about three years for un un uninterrupted instruction weekends. But I will tell you and anyone else it was worth it. And tell me, when did you know you had a love for education? When I was too young to realize it. So in hindsight being 2020, yes. um, I have two grandmothers, both deceased now, um, who really spoke life to me. Yes. And um, one of my grandmothers always said to me, Lisa, this is, the, you, you know, when you grow up, sweetheart, um, they would say two things, and I would I'll say it just the way they said it. Okay. You get all the learning you, you can, can get. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you get between your two ears, nobody can take away from you. That's learning true. is yours. You That's can, right. you own that. That's right. And the more you get, the more you can do. And, and that was very clearly um, articulated. But my uh, my grandmother, Osi, my grandma Osi, my mother's mom. Sure watch me with children all the time. And I told her I wanted to be a lawyer. It's and she right. said, that's fine, but you're going to be a teacher. <laughs> she, she always saw that. She said, yes. baby, you will be working with children. And I said, well, Grandma, no, I want to be an attorney. And she yes. said, okay. <laughs> You'll be working with children. And I guess, you know, so I, I think she spoke that in my life. And the other reality was at Spelman. Oh, yes. Uh, Spelman um, encouraged us as students to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. our, our, mo our motto or our mantra was lift as you climb and we're called to serve. And so I started volunteering my freshman year really? at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, I went there a couple of years ago as a member. Really? Oh, yes. So uh, at this Boys and Girls Club in Atlanta, um, it was actually a Vander Holyfield's, the, uh, the, I can't remember the name, um, but it was volunteering there for a year and a half as their director of learning center, I basically helped kids after school with their homework. See? <laughs> I never walked away from that experience and that feeling. And the concern that I saw when kids were challenged, and I felt that I had a calling to do more about that yeah. when I saw that kids needed more. So that's that, I think that was the two critical times in my life. My grandparents yes. and then that hands-on experience as I was discovering myself at Spelman through yeah. volunteering. volunteering. Mm -hmm. Warren Memorial Boys and Girls Club. Is that right? That's the name of it. Yeah, and then they have uh, Robert um, Gould Shaw Boys and Girls Club down there on uh, Mary Street. Yes. That's the one I went to. All right. Yeah. Yes, 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 sir. Well, describe to me the following in one word. Volunteering. Volunteering. Necessary. Yes. Georgia. <laughs> Sweet. Yes. That's my peaches. The ch education. Opportunity. Charleston County School District. Innovation. Dr. Lisa Herring. Ambitious. You are indeed. Well, you know, a lot of people know that you love education and you love volunteering. But what is something else that people don't know about you? <laughs> um, you know what, Quentin? I don't think that people see me having the chance to be a mother. I am very blessed to have a, my daughter, Amani. She's 16. Mm -hmm. It's always been the two of us. Okay. I mean, obviously, if it could have been different, I certainly would have been just as fortunate. But yeah. I, that defines a lot about what I do in education and it keeps me grounded. Yes. My daughter makes me laugh. I bet. She, she keeps me accountable. 
and she keeps me hopeful. That's good. Um, and we are silly, and I have, think I've even been ridiculed by some that we have this too close relationship. Oh. Uh, but I, it really, I understand how God's kind of designed yes. that for us. Yes, yes, And so to see the, and she would say, you all do not know how silly my mother is. <laughs> she is, love to laugh. Yeah. I love to dance, and I love to cook. Oh, is that right? I do. I Maybe do. you can teach me. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> if I can find the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Not busy. cooking as much as I'd like these yes, days, yes. but I love to do it. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, put on your thinking half of me. When you look into your uh, crystal ball as far as your future, what do you see? Well, for my future, um, I don't think I'll walk away from education anytime soon. That's good. Um, I, I think s s some people think that I, I may one day move towards superintendency somewhere. That would be awesome. Uh, and if that's God's will, that will be awesome. Um, I see myself trying to be very balanced. Okay. Because one thing about this work is um, I had a mentor who told me it's very difficult to get people to understand how demanding and complicated this work can be. Yeah. If they don't walk in our shoes, they don't get it. Don't break your neck trying to explain Ex it. Exactly. <laughs> so I, but because it's so important, I, I think it's critical that I find more balance in my life. Sure. Because it will help me execute better. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate to come from a family of leaders. I, 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 both my parents are still here, that's a blessing. Yes, and I talk to my uh, brothers and my parents about how we all seem to have this desire to um, have purpose-driven lives, but some aspect of leadership. So if it's not superintendency, which I, if it is, I will feel very fortunate for that. Um, if it isn't, it's still going to be some form of leadership. I'm sure. Because it's just in my DNA. Right, you know, in your it blood. Is, it is in my blood. Well, Dr. Lisa Heron, was so great talking to you. Quentin, it's been my pleasure. It's Thank been you. an honor to talk to you. You likewise. Yes, sir.